Okay, hello. Good evening, we're going to start. Uh, my name is Yannick, Yannick Gaultier. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit today about Google Accelerated Mobile Pages. Uh, I uh, hope uh, um, many people here know exactly what we are going to talk about today. Or, okay, that's good. Um, so, yeah, to turn this on. Uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, my name again is Yannick. Um, I have been involved in Joomla since about uh, its inception in 2006. Uh, I'm a developer of SH4 for Ceph, uh, Josera, which is a translation. Uh, SH4 for Ceph is a fairly well known SEO extension for Joomla. Uh, Josera is a translation manager. And today we're going to talk about. Uh, uh, our latest extension, which is called VBM, and which implements uh, accelerated mobile pages. But we'll talk a little bit about it, and then mostly about what and why you would like to uh, get on, on board with accelerated, accelerated mobile pages, which is a very uh, long and uh, uh, tiring thing to say. So I'll, most of the time, I would just say M. Um, what is it? Why we want to get uh, into that? And uh, eventually, for those who actually want, how do you do that? Uh, this is it. I'm just going to let you look at it. It's the simplest way to do it. This is about search, this is about speed, and this is about mobile uh, application. Fascinating. It's football, so it's really interesting. But uh, when it will replay, I'll just go back to what's happening here. So you've seen somebody uh, searching for a, a keyword on a mobile phone. Uh, football news, if you're interested into that. So what you see here is this. This is M. This is, you've seen those small, that small carousel of images. Those are articles special specific pa uh, pages on a website that Google puts on top of everything everything else and with that nice large image which obviously makes it uh, stand out within all the reasons so that's that's really the, the, the goal that's one of the main reasons you want to implement uh, IMP and on your, on your site uh, there is a there are, uh, there's an alternative implementation where the AMP page are not, uh, are not involved in carousel, so you don't have a nice image and everything, uh, but you're still going on top of every file. So that's still a big benefit. So that, that's basically what it is. Um, <coughs> now, from that, you can gather a few things. Uh, first, the first thing is how do you view and AMP pages? And the normal uh, workflow for that is not to go to your website and search for an AMP and, and look for an AMP pages. You people, visitors, users of your site, they will access AMP pages, your AMP pages, uh, through Google. That's a natural way to do it. They will also uh, access it from Twitter, because starting uh, uh, Twitter was a partner in the project. And so for the last few months, if a website, uh, if you share a uh, page of the site on Twitter, and there is a, uh, an AMP version for that page, then Twitter knows about it, and they will send people to, when you click on the, on the link, they will send people to the AMP version. And the reason for them is because it's much faster to display. Uh, sorry. Uh, there are other applications that start to do that, uh, like Feedly, which is a, a nice uh, mobile phone application, uh, which I use to um, aggregate RSS feeds. If you use it, it's nice. Uh, the main point is that uh, when you enable AMP, there will be nothing really changed on your site. So the most, uh, one of the most common questions I get is, mm -hmm. when I enable AMP, I expected uh, people go going to my site with a phone to see a different version. That's not how it works. Uh, people will get these AMP pages from Google, through Twitter, from other applications, uh, but not directly. You can, you just have to search for it, but it's, we'll get to that later. Um, in short, it's totally new. It was announced by Google uh, at the end of last year. It was enabled in February, at the end of February. Um, and it's now enabled in Google News. 
uh, and in only so far as of today in 12 countries. I hope yours is on the list. Uh, obviously, we expect they are still expanding that very much. So in the next few months, it's going to be released uh, worldwide. Uh, they have tried. Okay, it's a Google project, so it's really theirs, uh, but it's open source, it's on GitHub, you can contribute, you can talk to them, I actually uh, did that uh, a lot to, no, I did that a bit to fix uh, a few errors then, so it's pretty open. They have just uh, stated that in the two, um, three months of existence of this project, they have now indexed uh, 125 million documents on the web, and from uh, a bit, uh, 640, uh, hundred uh, thousand sites. So it's already starting to be pretty big in only three months of existence. Um, today, they, most, they are mostly interested in uh, news, in blog posts, in things that are really normally static contents. So that's not, as of today, where you're gonna, what you're going to um, put your uh, products pages from your web shop. There's no real big point. I mean, there's no problem in doing it. But there's no big points or big gains expected so far. But again, that's a moving field. Uh, yes, uh, on Wednesday, they announced that they have now expanded uh, AMP pages to recipes, which is a <coughs> specific kind of news, if you will, or blog post, maybe. Uh, so we expect that to expand. Uh, and one of the next steps, of course, will be to use AMP on product pages, on shops, because you search for a product, and then you, can, you, you, you see it coming up extremely quickly. So that's a big benefit. <coughs> Uh, why would you want that? Uh, first, never forget about that. The, the benefits is for your users to get access to your site very quickly. It's really nice. It's, uh, there are some drawbacks, there are things you can't do with AMP, but if you, if you live within those constraints, it's going to be very quick and it's going to be a very good experience for your users. Uh, from a purely SEO standpoint, uh, well, I, as you, you've seen, you get like a shortcut to the first page. If you are within those between 12 and 19 results in the carousel, then you get a shortcut to the, to the front page. That's pretty good. If you get there, uh, not only you get to the first page, but you got a very good exposure. So you know about having a, a good description on your pages to entice your user to click there and go come to your site. This is even bigger. You get a nice image, and so that's really positive. We expect the click-through rate to be very high. The speed, again, speed in itself is uh, an important SEO factor, especially on mobile. Uh, I'm not sure if that's clear, but all of these accelerated mobile pages, we're only talking about mobile. And another good reason is that uh, since, well, it's, they have not really rolled out the, uh, the releases yet, but it was announced two days ago, uh, the iOS and Android apps on your phone are now going to display by default the AMP version of a page if it exists. So if somebody enter a search in an Android, and in the Android search box, for instance, on, on their phone, uh, again, if you have an AMP page of your site, you're gonna be, you, you're gonna have some advantage, obviously. Um, there's no hard facts um, to back that up yet, but most, this is a, this is a, a survey by an SEO company, and it's expected by uh, about half of the SEO consultants that it will have a significant impact on rankings and signals uh, in the immediate future. So you want that. When, when we want to use it, not, not uh, on each and every site. Um, if Google News is, is important for you, if you're in the news or blog posting or things like that, if you're a publisher, that's definitely something you have to look at now. If you have lots of content, it's a way to, to revive it, if you will. If you have lots of mobile traffic, it's going to be good because your site is going to perform really well. If you don't have much mobile traffic, it's pretty good also because it's an easy way to maybe get uh, more mobile traffic. And if you're, you have some mobile traffic but your site is slow, then it's, again, an easy way maybe to, to, uh, uh, to speed it up and get back more. Traffic. Now I hope you've seen the the interest. So, how do you do that? How do you set up uh, mobile pages? Um, 
and AMP pages is a, an alternative version of your regular website page. So for each page of your site, or maybe not all of them, but some of them only, then uh, you're going to have to create on a separate URL uh, that alternate version. Uh, it's not really a convention, but most of times the uh, AMP version for import information page is going to be living at the same URL slash AMP. It's, it's not a rule. The URL can be anything you like, uh, but that's, that's common practice. The, basically, it's still HTML. It's HTML5 with some restrictions and some JavaScript to increase the speed of the display for the user. Uh, and a very big benefit is that if um, users get to, your, to that page from google.com, or from the Android, Google uh, search apps or iOS search apps, uh, the content will not come from your site. It will come from a cached version on Google CDN. So it's going to be really, really fast. It's re-optimized. It's cached throughout the, the world. You know, it's 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 going to be nearly as fast as Google itself. Uh, so this is how it works technically. Uh, this is a. Uh, uh, one of the blog posts we did on the site and inside that page we've put a it's probably just as small as you can read but we put a, a rel and html tag <coughs> so when a search engine when google comes there they know there is a uh, there is an, an, an amp version of that page which lives at this particular address so they're going to go and fetch it and index it and check it validate it and if it passes all the rules, then it's going to be indexed as an AMP page, and they'll know it's the, the AMP version for this page. Now, to avoid duplicate content penalty, in this AMP version, we're going to put a canonical tag, which says, this is the AMP version, but the real version is here. That's the, the main page, so don't duplicate things. And as you can see, okay, this one is simplified, because we didn't do much of the design there, but it's it's, it can be easily done, but it's, it's, it looks very much the same. But there are some internals that are different so that it displays much faster. Um, there are a few rules, but just to get, for those who are integrators and who deals with making those pages very often, or templating maybe, uh, the AMP specification says, uh, basically use the regular HTML. It has a few which are specific, AMP, in uh, image and video and analytics and, and a few more. You're not allowed to use any JavaScript. So that's clear cut. There's no JavaScript coming from you. There is some Google JavaScript, but it's not yours. And yours is removed. <coughs> uh, you can't use any form. There's no input. There's no button. Or you can have a button, but it doesn't have any action. So that's it. Uh, you have a limited supply of fonts. The, these are. The Google fonts, well, it's already pretty big, but you've got the Google fonts and you've got the Fastly fonts, the, the ones that are hosted on Fastly uh, CDN. And you cannot use any external CSS. So you could think it's a pretty big, those are pretty big limitations, but actually if you think about it, it's, it's pretty, you can, you can work around that. Um, in addition to complying with those HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever uh, specifications, you have to put in your end pages uh, some metadata like uh, the type, <coughs> uh, publisher information about you as a publisher, who are you, what are you doing, a logo, some uh, um, uh, publication dates, who is the author, and the, the image that you associate with the page. This is the one that's going to be in the carousel if you're lucky enough to get there. Uh, you can also put some analytics metadata. So the point is basically to show here that it's just a little bit more complex than just uh, to, in to include analytics in there is a bit more complex than just uh, adding one little piece of JavaScript. Um, that, that's what you would do normally on your website. Um, you can look at the AMP um, specification on, on the web. It's public. It's very big. Uh, it's fairly complicated. You got more details here. You can choose iframe image video should be replaced by the AMP equivalent. You can't you cannot use frame, object, bar, applet, and then whatever, whatever. You can't use style. Yeah. 
You said uh, it's not possible to use JavaScript. Yeah. But what if your website uses JavaScript for the menu? You can't use J JavaScript. Sorry? You cannot use JavaScript. Okay. In the in the screenshot on the right, I guess there was no menu. Yeah, but I will get back to that because that was like version 1.0. Mm. But now we are on we are at version 1.3, so we have menu. Ah. Yeah, of course. Just no JavaScript. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, so you have two solutions. You can get your hands dirty and try to write HTML that complies to AMP, and that's a little bit hairy. Uh, or you can use a plug uh, plugins. That's the approach that most people would use, and there are plugins for uh, all major CMSs. Uh, and the plugins, what they do is, because they are capable of producing uh, the regular page, then we are gonna put some filters on that and processing, and we are gonna build a, the end version from that. So it's going to be pretty much automatic. I just want to say something to Peter. But uh, if I understand, you don't need a menu because it's just one page with one article or an article. No, not really. Um, it's one page with an article. It can be anything. It can be a category page, if you will. Though so there's not much benefit from an SEO standpoint to that. But it, it can be anything. Uh, you can have a menu, and I will show you later. To, right now, if you go on our site, you, you, we, we have a menu. It just cannot use JavaScript, which is not a problem. You can do any with CSS, but you cannot put the CSS in an external file. You have to embed it in the page. Uh, so obviously, sorry, uh, um, uh, so I'm not going to talk about the hard end coding of end pages. I'm going to talk about the Weeby end plugin that we produced. Sorry, it's a bug, but uh, to be honest, at the day, uh, as of today, it's the only one available. So. Uh, so we did uh, WBM for Joomla. It does automatic conversion, uh, which means it will make sure the output, the AMP pages, it will take the regular pages page and transform it into an AMP page. It will be valid. It will be uh, in accordance. The transformation output will be valid according to the specifications. Whether it will look good or not, it's something different, but it, it will work. And you'll be surprised. It will look good very, very often. Because the key will remove things. And when, when you remove things, it, it gets simpler, but it looks good. It's readable. It's, it's the point. OK. Well, OK. Uh, we will do all the tagging, all the uh, JSON fields, metadata that, that's required. In most cases, we cannot guess all of it, but for ComCom, we'll, we'll get that to that. And of course, we'll do URL management, so we'll take care of adding the um, HTML canonical tags as, as required, and we'll take care of handling the AMP uh, bit in the URL when, when needed. Um, so, in pr uh, so, so that's a general view, that's what the, the plugin is doing. Uh, now, if, we start, if you start implementing uh, things using WeBM, what you have to do first is select content. Uh, why? Because you, you don't really want to put all of your site uh, there. You can, but it's probably pretty much not going to be useless. Uh, the typical um, uh, way to use it is you have a blog, so you have a blog, a blog so you've got a category page with all your, the beginning of each of your blog posts, um, or a category view with, with beginning of articles, and then people click uh, to get to, to see the full article. You don't want to index to. You don't want to put the the AMP page as a to put the category page as an AMP page. There is no SEO point in that. It's not going to be bring value, and there is strictly no chance that you're going to get you're going to end up on the carousel results because your category page is never going to be successful against more relevant uh, replies, answer co content for Google searches. So probably you want to just. Uh, Okay, that's contrary to what I've done here, but we have set up things where you can select the content on your site uh, by rules. For instance, you could say here, uh, I want for comp content, I want just the article view. Okay, again, I've put our category here, but it's a bad example, and I will remove it uh, in the next version of this presentation. And you select categories, and you, okay, so you've got a, a, a rules you can set to select the, the content you want to, to have as end pages. Uh, you can do that for other components as well. So we, we, we have a special handling for K2, which is pretty common, and probably demand-based, we will add, we'll add more. Uh, like I said, we have plugins for uh, Joomla. 
uh, and K2, and we use that to fetch the metadata, publication date, author, this could be automatically fetched. And uh, the next step is the metadata you want to set. Uh, you have to be a publisher, so a page is associated with a publisher. The publisher, publisher must have a logo. And it is recommended that you have your Google Plus ID put there. Mm, it's not required, but it's expected to be a, still a, a bonus. Um, and then menu, analytics, fallback image, and <coughs> password. Um, so those are other items that you may or may not want to implement on your site. Just picture the, the workflow. Somebody is searching in Google, they get on your end page, and probably, the, so they see your content. They were searching for something, they see your content, they are happy. Probably you want to bring them to your real site, where you have a form, where you can make them register for your uh, uh, newsletter, or buy your products, or whatever. So, the most obvious way to do that is to add links. Just click here to register, uh, for instance. But then you go to your real site. Another way of doing it is adding a menu. We couldn't do that earlier, but in the last version we have added a CSS-based menu. So it's pretty, it's integrated with Joomla. So you can just select a menu in a list and it will display. Uh, same for analytics, it's automatic. You just enter your ID and we do everything else. Uh, fallback image, we'll get back to that when we talk about validation. Mm -hmm. And then ads. Yeah, then ads because, because this is from Google. So one of the main thing they wanted to do is to let people, even if there's no JavaScript form or whatever, they wanted people to be able to put ads there because that's where they make a living from. Uh, it's a bit like landing pages, isn't it? Uh, it's, if you will, it's, it's a landing page, it's a landing page without oh, action, no call to action. Huh? It's a landing, it will be a landing, landing page without action or without a call to action. Uh, so it's, it's really about publishing content. Right now, it's really about publishing content, making it available on mobile uh, with um, low, well, like 3G, you know, uh, slow speed um, networks, make it that available very easily and very quickly. <coughs> so about the content uh, and the visual, visual aspect of your pages, um, what we do automatically is transform the tags. So the syntax is going to be okay. The Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Dailymotion, Instagram, and more links that you can put in your content are going to be transferred, transformed into actual uh, embedded uh, tweet, for instance. We have uh, made a bunch of uh, social, sh social share buttons that don't use JavaScript. Uh, and we, we have integrated uh, a number of ad suppliers that you can use to, pu to, to publish ads on your content. Uh, we have also added a dedicated template that basically remove all the craft that could be in your actual template, template that's used to, uh, to display your regular site. They usually have uh, template overrides, they, they change the output, so we have our own template, so we remove all of that. Uh, we have input box, so you can enter uh, custom CSS, and eventually everything is done through JLayouts. layouts. So you can, ever, you can overwrite absolutely everything. You can rewrite everything. If you're into HTML, you can, you can do that. But you will still have to follow the rules, follow the no form, no JavaScript, etc. And we just introduced the themes in that version um, because our first users basically had to go through the um, relooking uh, their end sites, their end pages, and so they thought it was a bit of work. So how can you split that? And one way is to for us to provide themes. So we're going to do that. Uh, the last version is now able to handle themes, and we have the first theme to be published. I couldn't do it before coming here, so it's going to be just after that, it's done. Okay, so you, you're gonna be having the ability to, uh, to select a theme and have your uh, AMP page change uh, aspects. Uh, the theme are customizable, so you can be able to change colors, change fonts, change font size, extra from, from the back end. So it starts to become pretty flexible in terms of visual aspects. Uh, and that's when everything is okay, but usually you will have also to be honest, some adjustments to make. Uh, 
for that we have response. What, what sort of adjustments are we talking about? Uh, let's say you are using uh, a plugin to show tabs in your contents, or you have some sort of slideshow inside your article that you um, um, embedded with shortcuts. And, and so because in the, on the AMP version there is no JavaScript, that's, that's not going to work. So we, we have uh, tags also that you can put in your content with, with your editor that basically are going to say uh, this part only show on the regular pages or this part only show on the end pages. So again, you, you're pretty much in control of what's going to be displayed. Uh, we have things like this to help you embed a daily motion video, for instance. Okay. Um, the syntax, the actual AMP syntax is pretty difficult, so you have short codes like this to help you put your content. Uh, and because it was a bit hard, so we did a, an editor plugin so that you, for the most important uh, buttons, uh, sorry, uh, short codes, uh, you, you just press the AMP button that's here and you got a pop up and you can enter some data and then it will insert the, uh, the code the, with a good syntax for you. That typically uh, prevents some stuff to be inserted in an AMP page or uh, force it to be shown only on AMP page. Uh, now you've done all that and everything looks good but the most important point, the most important thing you want to do after that is validate because uh, Google is going to take into account and index and show to users only pages that are valid. Uh, there are two steps to the validation, two things you need to validate. You've got the, um, uh, the syntax itself, whether the HTML tags and everything are okay, whether there's no JavaScript, whether there's no forms and whatever. And uh, this is done in Chrome. You just have to use Chrome and you add something to the URL, I'm going to see that, and it's going to tell you whether you have errors or not. And the second step is to validate that the metadata uh, we've seen before is, again, uh, enough and appropriate. And this is done um, through Google and online service. Uh, the testing, the syntax testing is done like this. You, you, you put uh, dash development equals one in Chrome, you reload the page, and you open the developer console, and you'll see here this. You'll see powered by AMP HTML, blah, blah, blah. And if all is good, you'll see zero error, AMP validation successful. And that's if all goes well. If it does not, you've got, you're going to see a bunch of red lines that you will have to wonder about and fix, uh, hopefully. Usually it's because you have left some things there that should not be, that don't belong there. So that's something you can do, uh, you know, it, uh, as you're developing, you can test that. <coughs> um, and then when the syntax is, when the syntax of pages are okay, you can go online and check that the metadata is okay. And what you're going to be using here is the same uh, tester, online tester tool that you use for, or you may be using for uh, rich snippets when you have put some uh, structured data in your pages for, uh, to, to try to obtain rich snippets. Uh, so it's a link, you go there, you type the URL of your page, of your AMP page, and it will tell you uh, right away whether this page is okay, has enough metadata or not. Uh, I do insist on that because we'll see later. Uh, you want to inform Google that you have AMP pages, and this is done by putting the rel equals AMP HTML tag in your page. You want to do that only when your page pages are valid. Because if they are not, they're going to they're go, they're come very quickly to discover your pages. They're going to look at your AMP HTML pages, they're going to be very happy looking at them. But if they are wrong, if there is a syntax error, if the metadata is missing or missing an image or it's not big enough, then they are going to throw you back to the, you know, to, to the, really at the end of the backlog and they are only maybe come back to check again two months later. So it's, it's a big problem. So check first. Uh, which is why we added actually a development mode where we don't publish the pages. We, we, you can see them and they are there, but Google is not going to be informed of that. So you won't, that's where probably where you want to start with. Uh, this is a view of the structure, structured data listing tool on a given page on our site. And if all is, yeah, that's, this is what you're looking for, all green. Okay, that's normally pretty easy to achieve. But uh, you absolutely have to check it. Um, now, you've done all that, and how do you know you're good? And you're good, you, you know you're good, you know <coughs> uh, things are going well, when 
uh, you got millions of users coming to your site, of course, but that's not going to happen overnight. So uh, they are adding reports to the search console in Google Analytics to display AMP related data. So far, it's pretty simple. You have uh, uh, basically the number of pages that are indexed and the number of and any errors they found. Um, I'm not sure it's rolled out entirely worldwide, but the search console now also has an AMP, an AMP filter. So it will tell you which users came from, basically came through your AMP pages to your main site. So it's, it's really, AMP is really spreading throughout the whole uh, AMP, uh, Google uh, ecosystem. This is how it looks in the search console. This is a real thing. Uh, uh, just to let you know, see, we, we, we enabled uh, AMP pages on our site on February, mid-February, and there was a bug in the first, there was testing, so it, there was a bug in the first version of uh, WebEMP, and in this, so we had 40 pages, uh, 30 something pages indexed, but they were all wrong. Uh, like I said, uh, mid-February, we, we fixed it right away, like the next day, it was okay. And eventually we came back to zero error, really zero on 14th of April. So they took, it took them um, two months to just clear out, to come back and realize that those uh, 30 less, less than 30 pages were actually right now. So really, test, don't publish before it's, it's good. That's it, that's your review. Here are useful URLs, the end projects, they have documentation, they have things there that are really accessible, and this is the URL of the plugin, and the documentation which is available. So the plugin, because there's probably going to be a question about that. Uh, there's a um, community version that's free, and then there's the main version that's um, uh, for a subscription. It comes with port and everything. Okay, and the community version is most simple, of course. Um, the nice features that you can find in the, in the full version. That's it. <laughs> Your turn. On the previous graph, where it's shown validated in blue, and then there's a spike and it drops back. Uh -huh. What do you put that? What's that now? You all have to ask them. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I can only guess, but I think maybe they actually removed some, like they were reconsidered maybe then duplicates. I don't think so actually, because they, those are really block posts. So I don't think they would do that, but. Seems to level out just under 30. Yeah, exactly. Like they, they, there was a spike here, and you have the same spike here, so that's at exactly the same level. What could explain that is that at some point, uh, and due to a bug, we also uh, exposed some of our forum pages as AMP pages. And I'm pretty sure they discovered that later on. So that should normally explain the difference, but there's no, you know, like it's not like you have a list of your AMP pages so far. Okay. Yep. Seems like uh, AMP is is something that would always run in parallel with um, a main site that would be perhaps more sophisticated in the case of Gmail with jQuery and JavaScript. Do you think <coughs> that um, that will always be the case, or does Google have something bigger in mind for for the end game? Okay. First. This is like an introductory kind of thing. So you don't have to, the, the main page on the main site plus the end version. It doesn't have to be like that. Like in the last version, we actually introduced as well what we call the standalone standalone mode, where all the pages are actually end. Uh, and obviously, the use case is not for every every single site on the, on the planet. But there are some situations where I think it makes sense to have that. Like if you want to do a very quick uh, mobile-oriented website for, I don't know, Jane Beyond, uh, you can do that. You just have a Joomla site, you have a standard mode, and all the pages are, are AMP. Um, obviously, you could consider that not being able to use forms or things like that is going to be a problem, but it's not entirely true as well. You can use JavaScript and forms and pretty much everything, but you just have to put them into in iframes. Uh, their point is that, I mean, I don't want to get too much into your details, but they, what they want to avoid is when you are on a mobile site, you're looking at a site, you don't, you, they want to avoid uh, images and contents, jumpings up and down, you know, as, you know, as they are loading, the image is coming, so the content you started is already started reading, it, or it's, 
it jumps down to you know outside maybe your view, and they want to avoid that. So everything has to be sized. Images they must have a size, so the page can be rendered fully uh, from from the page load. Right. So it's it's one way to achieve that. But it means also that if you want to, that's what we're going to have in next version 1.4. Uh, we are going to have a AC mailing uh, newsletter registration form embedded into an iframe. So if you're using AC mailing, then your visitors and landing pages are going to be able to uh, drop their email into uh, AC mailing. So if you have, like a, again, like an event site or something like that, or a preliminary site, it can be, it can be good as well. And for the, the master plan, obviously, you have no idea. Um, this is what they want to do. You know, their, their goal. Um, I thought I had a slide on that. It's, maybe I skipped it. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't come out of the blue. This is a reply to three things, basically, to Facebook instant articles, which is something for maybe you're familiar. But uh, there's something similar that's coming from Facebook. It's called Facebook instant articles, and uh, technology is not exactly the same. But the principle is the same. You share something on Facebook, you click on that, and the page displays immediately. Uh, so it's similar. The, obviously, <coughs> the Facebook thing uh, is only for Facebook. So supposedly there's a big advantage here, but Facebook is one and a half billion users, so it's essentially as well. The second thing they want to fight for that is uh, Apple News, which is something similar uh, from Apple, which is much smaller, I believe, at the time. Uh, and the Third thing they want to fight is mobile apps. They want to avoid people reading news, or whatever, on on, their, on on a mobile application because they don't sell. They sell much less ads when people use ads. So that it's not a captive market. So that's just, for them. It's a really important thing, and I think it will spread out really, really strong. So this is Google. Maybe in two years they'll just drop a thing. You know. Well, they have page Sorry? They had caches before, they had caches, right? Yeah, they have. Yeah. They, have they do a lot of they things have. to speed up things, but they also have uh, small uh, cards with news results before. But they, when you click on that, you still go to the regular website. So basically, the speed and the quality of the display would only depend on whatever uh, the, the, the webmaster, the, the people doing the site, would do. If you look at that from a technical standpoint, there's nothing new. It's just HTML and JavaScript. They are not doing speci anything special. And many designers, people say, OK, but we can do that already. We just have to size the images and don't put um, 23,000 lines of CSS to make it look good and, and 25 jQueries, plugins, whatever. You can do that. But the problem is nobody is doing it. Oh, actually, what I mean is that everybody is putting gazillions of uh, CSS and plugins and everything in JavaScript. So this is a way to force things into the right direction for users. Uh, eventually, it's good for Google. See, it's good for so I have good hopes, but I, I don't know if it's going to be uh, JMB on 2018. And uh, I'll be talking about something completely different. But there is one thing worth mentioning here: is that if you want to be on that bandwagon, you have to jump now because. Uh, this is giving you a a push, a benefit. You get you get you you, you, you get a, you get above people that normally in regular SEO search results you wouldn't go past them. But if you go fast, then for a while, for some month, you're going to be there. Uh, for instance, I said they are they have uh, enabled that in uh, Android search <coughs> application. So now everybody who is uh, in the next few months, everybody searching something in their Android phone, if you have or rather, if you don't have an AMP version of your content, probably you're going to be having a big penalty. I mean, it's not like a real penalty that like you're out of the search, but it's going to be very hard to compete with people who actually have an AMP page. So where are you trying to find examples? I'm trying to find examples on Google. Hmm. And those carousel images come, does it have to have the AMP before? Yes, it, 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 it if it's not, then it's just pointing to an ordinary page. Exactly, that's the difference. Yeah. That's you, if you don't have this, if you have that symbol, uh, then it's going. To, if you click on it, it's yeah. going to show the yeah. amp version of the page. Yeah. How does it deal with images? 
images. Yeah, because they have to be a certain size because it's something automatic. Yeah, it's all it? it's all automatic. Uh, yeah, it's basically all automatics. And again, it's one image. Like say you have to spray on. Yeah, no, it's going to be like you can have a slideshow, for instance. They have a they have a, a dedicated component for that that you can include uh, in your in your content, and it's going to be a slideshow, and you can slide through it. So you can put images. It's fine. Uh, like I said, if if this comes from Google uh, Cache CDN, uh, they will actually re-optimize your images anyway, and probably have multiple sizes and everything. What about retina images? Sorry. Retina. Uh, sorry, I missed that. Retina images. Uh, well, I'm, I don't know exactly what to do, but I would put it this way: if you if your original image is big enough to fit there, then they will serve the most optimized version they can to fit the. The actual device. Yeah. How it works is that the first thing to be loaded is the HTML of the page, and then their own they have a um, an amp.js library, which is the thing actually displaying the content and re-optimizing everything and the, the order of things. And you know, if the picture tag is it, is um, can be used. Uh, picture, uh, I don't think. What's what? Uh, no, uh, every image. Is actually replaced like an image IMG tag is actually replaced by a specific version AMP patch, which is a uh, dot IMG, which is executed and run by that uh, JavaScript library. So they are responsible for loading whatever uh, <coughs> image is most suited for the actual device, and they still uh, they still recommend to use, uh, for instance, source set like responsive image if you can. Okay. Yeah. okay. So it will work with. Okay. Any image, but if you can do that, then it's going to be. Okay. It's basically HTML. At, at, you know, at the bottom of it, it's still HTML. So you can use HTML, a subset of it, but a very large subset. <coughs> so it's good. Yeah. And finally, do you know how it will integrate with web, uh, web app in the side? I don't think it really has anything to do with that. Like. It's a, it's a different rendering process. You, you have some kind of app, uh, sorry, you have some, some regular app uh, page, you have some regular HTML page, for instance. So, so they take that and they have their, and from that, uh, okay, it's not, they don't, they, we built, like either you or WeBM, a plugin or something, provides them with a URL of a page which is the end version of that original page. So they don't care about the original page, it's not going to be used. Uh, and what you put in the end version of the page must comply with uh, their specifications. Their specifications includes, I mean, it's not even a specification. Their JavaScript is actually doing all the progressive stuff, basically. They, they are all doing it for you. That's the point, basically. It's, like I said, Everything is possible, but nobody was doing it. So they sort of worked out a way to do that automatically, as much as can be, to push people into the right direction, which is a faster uh, internet. There's a lot of it which is involved, which is coming also from trying to um, to get better results in uh, countries where in developing countries maybe where the network, the mobile networks, don't have a high bandwidth. Uh, or it's not developing countries. My, my own country you know, always have uh, high bandwidth uh, mobile, so it, it, is, has a, it has a lot to do with that. You know, they said they are doing like more than half of their searches are now from a mobile device, more than half. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's, uh, it's a major thing. They want people to keep searching so they can show results with ads. But you don't have to put ads, you know, it's, it's really your own stuff. Okay. Well, thank you.